All right, welcome back to another Cool Tools Show and Tell. Today, my very special guest is Jen Herkenroder. Jen is an engineer with a background in art and fabrication. By day, she builds experimental aircraft, and by night, she builds battle bots. She also peppers in some graphic design and illustration and still dreams of writing her own comics. Jen, thank you for joining us, and what did you bring to show? Uh, today, I have brought a tool that I thought was pretty universal, but it turns out a lot of newbie welders don't know about this because they pick up welding just like really quick as a hobby or they get a, a really small hobby welder and don't buy all the accessories for it. So what I want to show you is a welding tip cleaner and it comes in a couple of shapes and sizes. All right. Now, why would someone need to clean clean off the tip? Like what's um is it just the the artifacts does, does this gunk build up and affect the welding? Uh, well, all of the tips, the tips are pretty inexpensive. They're kind of considered a consumable. Um, eventually, the little tiny bit at the end there where the wire actually feeds out both for flux core welding and for MIG welding, when you're using an inert gas, um, there's always going to be some spatter because the metal is being basically blown onto, in the case of MIG, into the weld uh, via voltage, and it's being surrounded by a shielding gas. But some of that's going to splatter out. There are going to be little pops um, flux in particular has a lot of slag and tends to throw a lot of little particles back. So the tips will get clogged up kind of quick, uh, especially if you are maybe welding a little bit too close or if you're just learning how to weld and like your hand technique isn't quite there. So you might go through a lot of tips really quickly. And yeah, a 10 pack is maybe $15, but if you're blowing through a 10 pack and you have to go to the welding store and get another 10 pack or order one online, you're losing, losing time as it goes. Yeah. All right, so what is the uh, what does the process look like? So you grab this, and it'll, it'll be you know a little clogged up, and uh, this has a variety of different sizes of files, and they're all very small round files. And what you do is grab the smallest one that will fit, and you use that to, to kind of gently ream out where the, the metal is collected inside. Uh -huh. and you don't want to use the one that's too big or force one through because these nozzles are fitted to the size of the welding wire running through them, so 0 0.030 or 0 0.035. And if you change the diameter of that hole, you're not going to get as clean of a weld as you would like. So just choose the smallest one that fits. Now, this is okay, like it's, but you got to, you know, kind of hold on to it and it's a little awkward in your hand. So like that's all right, but there's another style that I like better, and this was gifted to me uh, in the first first time I went to get my my welding certification, and it looks like this, kind of like a pen, and the end of it is a lot like an exacto knife. Wow. So you pull this little guy out, and all of the the different sizes are held inside. Ooh. So what you can do, just like an exacto, put the uh, put the little tip in. Select the size you want. And now, I like this because it feels more like a tool that is doing a job, and you can get a little bit of a you know grip on it, and you can kind of get into the space you want and give it a little twist. So I like this style better. They do cost more. Uh, the cheap one comes in at about five or six dollars. Uh -huh. This one's twelve to fifteen. This one's made by Hobart. They make a lot of good welding supplies, but I think between the two, I like this style better. The other thing that I like about it, on my welding jacket, I have a pocket on my shoulder, and I can just hook it on my pocket. Nice. And I, that's a great place to keep it out of the way, because I find that things in my interior pockets, when I sit down, they just, I feel them. And yeah. if you're not comfortable, you're not welding. If something is distracting you then you're not doing as good of a job as you could be. It's very focused. <laughs> yeah, I think of it, it looks almost like um, the difference between like having those, like a hex wrench um, collection that's all on like one, you know, those yeah. fold out hex wrench and, and compared to just having like a, a whole ball end set that you could actually use and get, you know, better grip on. Yeah. All right. And then uh, where can people find your work? Uh, well, right now, the big project that's underway is our BattleBots build for... Season 5, BattleBots 2020. So you can find us on Instagram under Offbeat Robotics. And we're also on Facebook, Hijinx BattleBot. And, I, and we're also on Twitter. So if you're, into, if you're into robots and seeing how the build process goes, we're being sort of secretive about what the overall design is. But we're sharing a lot of build progress pictures, a lot of machining, welding. Um, I put a flamethrower video up yesterday. <laughs> we're doing an RC flamethrower on this version because... 
because I, I want to because it's fun. <laughs> so it will be a good year for that. Awesome. Yeah, if, if you can't have fun with a flamethrowing robot, it's like, why, why are you even in the competition? I'm sorry. It's gotta... uh, I know. <laughs> All right, Jen, thanks a lot for joining me today. It's a great recommendation, and uh, we'll have links to everything down here in the description. Okay, thank you.